Hey there, boys and girls of the YouTube world. Today, Duff Dog and I are going to see if we can't get a 1937 Ford truck running. Yep, that's right, this thing came from northern Minnesota up in the Iron Range country. Local guy brought it down here. He didn't get anything done with it. I had a D100 that I wasn't getting anything done with, so we made a swap, and now I got this thing. Not exactly sure how long it's been off the road. A few years ago is what they said, so we know what that means. Hey, are you gonna get a bath? Cause you rolled in, cause you rolled in the, in the deer poopies? It's, look at this, the joys of owning a dog. If you guys, I think Duff's amazing. You can come give him baths because he stinks. Because you're a stinky boy, aren't you? Stinky boy. Stinky boy. So I showed this thing in the yard walk around video. 37 was the first year of the split windshield on the Ford cabs. 35, 6 doesn't have it. They do share a lot of parts between 35 and 36. I like the 37 grills. They kind of come down to a point and then they got horizontal bars as opposed to vertical bars. I think 37 is the first year of horizontal. Then they kind of come to a point. Real good looking grills. Even use them on some land speed cars. It's got the headlight conversions to sealed beams. So I'm guessing probably in the 50s or 60s, they quit running it. Add on accessory, turn signal lights, chicken chasers on the roof. Oh, radio antenna. One wiper, that's right, passenger never needed to see you back in the day. Crank out windshield for air conditioning, and then you got air conditioning here, you know, to keep your junk cool, Duff. Front tires are wasted. Back tires, I think are those military style treads. I'm guessing they're like eight and a quarter, 20s, 920, something like that. Doors don't open. Here's your add-on accessory blinker switch, horn button. This is your headlight switch, in case you didn't know that. Oh man, look at how cool that ornate the window crank is. I don't think that's factory. But they both match. Weird. No, oh, the door handle doesn't match. It's got the keys in her though. And this has been chewed on by some rodents, whatever it is. It's got the big heavy floor speed. It's got enclosed drive line. That's your crank out for your window. This should be one solid panel across here, but she's pretty rotted out. There should be a cover here for the wipers and then just a full cover on the other side to be symmetrical. But the old mice like to get up there and make their homes and then pee in them a bunch and then they rot out. Pickups, had the gas tank in the back. Trucks, I think are under the seat. Yep, there it is right there. I think it's been a few different colors. I think it started as this original Ford green and then it must have been black at one time. See that original white pinstripe. Overall, it's it's pretty solid. Back of the cabs, got a few hooey's in it. The roofs are always beat up on these trucks. This one isn't too bad. Usually they climb on the roof to strap down their load or whatever. Or if they had a dump bed, it would smash into it. This one did not have a bed on it when I got it. So I don't know if there was a flat bed on there or what. What are those? What size are they, Duff? 750-20s. I think this is the factory tail light. That's that add-on turn signal. Yeah, it would make sense. You only got one tail light with these. I don't even know if that's the right one. I think it is, actually. And then when they put the add-on blinker kit, turn signal kit, whatever, that came with it. She's hauled some loads. Broke the upper spring. These do have a banjo style rear end similar to what the cars have, just a lot bulkier. Instead of having like a drop in center section, they actually split down the center here. And then there's your torque tube that splits off the front. And that's how you take your ring gear and pinion apart. Worthless knowledge for you. It's got mechanical brakes. So one of these would be for your park brake. And then one of them would be for your actual foot brake. The beauty about those is you push them and it always feels like you got brakes, even though you don't. Here's the speedometer cable. Instead of coming off the transmission, they actually come off the rear end, which is kind of neat, because then if you keep this match up with your rear end, your speedometer's always gonna be right. Looks like somebody replaced that bolt. 
on the wish bones and put a wash used a spider gear for a washer weird this brake rod's been patched up i think those holes are supposed to be round they've probably been rattling around a bit more into those cables yeah you can see that that's the rubber that should be in there these things were pretty crude not much for brakes not much for suspension big old fat stack of leaf springs but we did get stainless fuel caps i'm sure that has not held fuel in quite some time I think we did show in a yard walk around, but something must have happened to the door. I don't know if it got banged up or rusted out or whatever, but there's a patch panel that goes from here all the way to the front edge of the door. I'm guessing it's probably leaded on because this was pre-Bondo days when they did this. A lot of times these doors come flung open too far and they'd hit the fender and get damaged down here. And then sometimes they would actually damage right around the door hinges as well. It's got a little bit of glass in it, front and rear glass, and then part of the side glass. This has got the 85 horse, 59 AB flathead, should, I think. 37 is first year of the 24 stud, 21 stud, can't remember. Look at that, no flexi hoses. That's how you do her upright. The factory Ford style hoses that come down and Got an angle at the bottom. It's got the early scuba diver distributor on it. It's got these two caps on each side for four plug wires on this side, four plug wires on that side. The coil's built into the top of it. It's got the Ford script on it. Single pulley generator and water pumps. Neat thing about these flatheads, if you don't know much about them, they got two water pumps and then they got four radiator hoses, two uppers, two lowers. Looks like it's got a Stromberg 97 on it. So you can tell that why it's got the fuel inlet going into the bowl instead of on top of the bowl on the cover. That's what your 94s have. So it's a little bit more desirable carb. Oil bath air cleaner. It's got the Varcon 6 volt. I'm sure that'll charge right up. So we'll throw that on the charger. Ooh, that's probably worth big money these days with the way building supplies are. No road draft to them, just a great big scoop that vented atmosphere. No way that carburetor's loose. Not a chance. Aluminum intake. It's not an aftermarket one. They did use aluminum intakes for a handful of years. Yeah, not a ton to see under here. I think first thing we'll do is get that battery out of there, pull all the plugs out, start putting some oil in there, and then maybe take a peek in the cylinders if we can, see what's going on in there. I guarantee this thing's not loose. They never are. We're gonna have some stuck valves, so we might just pop the heads off right away. I don't know. So like it or not, my plan with this thing is I've got a stack of frames. You can go check out my other video on early Ford frame identification. I've got some 35 to 40 car and pickup frames or 41 pickup frames. I'm going to take and set this cab on one of those and then the hood and the grill. And then I've got another 35 to 37 Ford box, set that on the back. And then you basically got yourself a half ton pickup. You can't use the fenders because they got the bigger radius for the 20 inch wheels. But you can't find pickup fenders front or rear. They're just impossible to find. I don't think they even made three quarter ton pickups in 37, 35 to 37. They just made half tons and then went straight up to these like ton and a quarter, ton and a half, whatever these are. So I'm just going to kind of mock it all up as like a half ton pickup high boy with no fenders. So just cab, hood, grill radiator, and then a box on it. So kind of hot rod style. And that way it'll be all Ford, early Ford parts and it's a lot smaller than this. These trucks, you just, you can't fix them up because brake parts are obsolete. Tires are crazy ridiculous expensive. And these rims, if one of those is screwed up, they're stupid expensive, kind of hard to find. And they're just not any fun to drive. They're slow, they're rough riding. I mean, basically all it's good for is parades. I despise parades. Grew up going through parades, hated it. No desire to go to the parades. I'll watch a parade if I absolutely have to, but I refuse to drive through a parade. So I'm not going to build a parade unit. I'd rather build it into a half ton, you know, something we can stick a small block or a flathead or whatever into it. And then you can haul some stuff around, have a good time, go highway speeds, you know, at least 55. This thing probably capped out at 40, 45 miles an hour originally and rode like a lumber wagon, loaded or empty. 
So that's the plan. Um, that being said, I think I'm gonna pop the hood off and the grill and the fenders before we even get started just to get all that stuff out of my way just so we can get in there and try to get that flathead running. And like I said, it's all gotta come off here anyway. The frame, they're just, there isn't any demand for them. There isn't guys doing this stuff. I mean, there's a few guys buying them, but for the 100 or 150 bucks I'm probably gonna get out of this frame, it's just, it's gonna get repurposed. We'll just leave it at that. Yeah, what do you think? Should we give you that bath? Yeah, I think we'll give you a bath quick. Here's what I was talking about with the door wrapping around. It really chews up around the hinges and you can see right there where it usually catches on the fender. That one actually hasn't been whammied up too bad. 14,000 pound gross weight. I wonder if it was gray at one time too. Maybe a red. A lot of colors. She's missing a fin duff. Early flatheads were 85 horsepower, and then the later ones, 49 and newer, were 100 horse, so 49 to 53. And then the Mercs, the 8 CMs, were 110 horse from 49 to 53. Your worthless knowledge of the day. So now I'm going to set up the tripod, a little time lapse of me taking this apart. Here we go. Telling me that thing's on fire. Whoops. Well, I guess if we burn the shop down, they can't take it from us. If we're gonna lose the shop. She's gonna go down in a blaze of glory. We got the front clip off. No critical components were harmed in the process. Small fire. Nothing to worry about. That little guy. Don't worry about that little guy. Oh, that little guy. I wouldn't worry about that little guy. I think we're gonna pull the plugs out now. See what's going on in the cylinders. Maybe take a look in there. Probably squirt some zep in there. But I think, based on what we've been seeing with these flatheads, we're probably just gonna pop the heads off right off the bat. But who knows? Maybe we'll pull the plugs out. Take a look in there, try cranking it over, see what happens. She's a little rusty. We might have to pull the head off just to get those plugs out. Well, that's a champion plug. 
This one's an AC. And these two are Tigers. I've never even heard of a Tiger brand plug. Put a Tiger in your tank, I've heard of that one. But it's never a good sign when the plugs don't match. Looks like we got two ACs and two Tigers on this side. You guys ever seen Tiger brand spark plugs? Yeah, me either. We got some good old fashioned ACs and the old Champion J9s. Here's our next predicament. I don't know if that's battery acid that rotted out these two, but there's a lot of debris still on this one. So we gotta figure out how we're gonna get those out of there. And then this one, the plug socket, just don't even wanna go over it. It's so big and bulky. Oh man. Did it even come out of there? Hot dang. We might give it a new set of plugs. Oof, duh. Yeah. She's got a bunch of rust in there. That one don't look bad. I gotta get the crud cleaned out of this one. Get that one out. Put the big wrench and big socket on that one. See what we got. The problem with looking down the plug holes on a flathead is you pretty much just see the edge of one valve. I think it's the intake valve. No, it's probably the exhaust. Anyway, if you have a stuck valve and it's that valve, it's easy to tap through the plug hole. But you can't really see the cylinders. So I think we'll put a crank on the front and see what happens. But I think we're just going to pull the heads off. See what happens. The old winch and three A's. No way. She's turning. <laughs> Since the fan isn't turning, because the belt's a little loose. Show you guys what we got going on here. Maybe. She's turning. And most of the grinding you're hearing is on the belt. Oh, it's got a rebuilt. Ford water pump on it, still got the forge script. Would you believe that? This thing's probably been sitting since the 60s, and you saw how nasty those spark plugs were. Super rusty on the inside, all rotted off on the outside. I mean, look at that battery, for a Varcon battery. When was the last time they made those? So, you know that was the last time it was run. Sold at Gambles, oh, Minneapolis, Minnesota. I mean, that's how long this thing's been sitting. I mean, for sure since the 70s. Took up a battery, get her zinging over, put a little zep down the cylinders just to appease you guys. And then figure out which valves are stuck because there's always a couple valves in these flatheads. I think we'll try some Croil, the new convenient king size. Thanks to whoever sent this, I can't remember who it was. The oil that creeps. A lot of creeps around here. Loosens frozen metal parts. Or your money back. Hmm. Well, let's give this a shot. It does smell pretty good. I think this is like an East Coast thing, Croil. You don't hear much of it around in the Midwest. Nine o'clock whistle. Time for the dogs to howl and kids to get home before Ma beats you. You guys got a nine o'clock whistle at home? Six o'clock with supper time. 
Noon was obviously lunchtime, and 9 o'clock was get your butt home before Ma beats you. Can't do that anymore with kids, allegedly. I still cannot believe this thing turns over. Ooh, that oil's real thick. I guess that's good though, right? Maybe. Apparently if it turns over. Creepy Russell in his LS swap desk time. Oh yeah. Get after it. It's gravel. Really spins them. Now I know how it feels to be you putting. Everybody that drives by when you have the door open gotta rev their engines. Thanks guys. Really needed it. I'm guessing these old cloth wires probably are going to cause us to have another fire. So I think I'm going to put a new ground cable and a new battery cable to the starter. Grab a 12 volt solenoid. We're just going to whammy this sucker over on 12 volts. So those starter Bendix is really like that. Odds are I'm just going to have to take that starter apart because that's what we do here. We break valves off with hammers. And we take starters apart. Take your pick. Any video. We probably had a starter apart. Let's spray some croil in that first. God, that stuff smells good. It's delicious. It's powdered sugar. The lice hate the sugar. Listen, Rod, it's delicious. Oh man, it's even one of the sweet Ford starter solenoids with the depress button on it. You push a button on the bottom of the solenoid to basically just bypass the button inside the cab. Turn it over from under the hood, which is handy on a Ford, because they're always broke down and you're working on them. <laughs> Sorry, angry Ford folk. But don't worry, I'm an equal opportunity hater. I hate them all at some point. You can see how pitted the head is from where battery acid leaked onto the head. I've never seen that before. That battery, she leaked a lot of fluid. Well, I don't know about that Gambles one. Varcon, it's a good one. But just batteries in general. Most effective way to get rid of these old band clamps? The old death wheel. Always wear your safety glasses. Put the old locking pliers up here. Is that going to be in the way? Probably. Come on! <sighs> hey, you're here! Are you so excited that we might hear this thing crank over? Well, see you later. Where are we going to put our new battery at so it doesn't fall? Or so that it doesn't look like all the rest of the batteries around here covered in oil and whatnot? Yeah, that's going to fall. What if we put you here? What if we just put you on the ground? The cables reach? Yeah. So I want to thank Lee Belt Homes in Aberdeen for providing us this battery, battery sponsor of the week. Thank you. Duff appreciates it. Even though he's outside, probably rolling in something dead. Or humping somebody's leg, whatever. Loser switch time. Hey, I put a link in the description for all the garbage that I use in these Will It Run videos and stuff. The socket set that I usually use in my Milwaukee impacts, the starter switch, my boat tank, all that good stuff. All the stuff you need to go revive something out in the weeds or in your garage or in your mother-in-law's backyard. Whatever. 
It's down there. The links are there. It's on Amazon, so I get like four and a half cents per hundred dollar item that you buy. Whatever. The part numbers are there. Get the good loser switch. Don't get the cheap one. Ask Puddin' Owl. He knows. That's what I love about six volt starters on 12 volts. It just just sticks it right to them. Oh, it loosened up the nut. Yeah. Don't hit that button while you've got a wrench on the crankshaft. Not good. Let's take that off there. So similar to Cold War Motors, go check those guys out. They're up in Canada. What is the game that they play? Guess the compression or will it compression? Or what's what's the compression? Something like that. How many cylinders do you guys think are gonna have any compression? I'm guessing we got valve stuck on at least one. I'm gonna say five out of eight. Put your comment down below with how many you think. Just never mind, just keep it to yourself. But it's gonna be one for sure that doesn't have compression because we have a stuck valve and probably two or three. I'm saying three. One of them's not going to be stuck very bad. Two of them are going to fight us. Well, there's number one that's no compression. One out of two ain't bad. One out of three is getting to be not good. Let's just go with Chevy numbers. So two and six, no compression. Two, six, and eight, no compression. I already lost. We got four of them. Five of them. Two for seven at this time. Ugh. So for those of you that guessed six cylinders out of eight that don't have any compression because they got stuck valves, give yourself a nice cold sandwich to enjoy. A lot of people wonder why I haven't been drinking that many sandwiches. It's because the Rona screwed up my taste, and I can't. They, I can taste things, but sandwiches taste absolutely putrid. And I have like 12 cases sitting around here because I trade a lot of work for sandwiches, and they're probably going to go bad. So hopefully this Rona taste thing comes around, or there's going to be some beer getting skunky, or we're going to have one hellacious party for everybody else while I drink. Mix cocktails, because those are acceptable. That's making me thirsty. I should mix one up. So now that I've switched over to the mixed drinks, comment down below with what you guys suggest for a mixed drink. I like that screwball peanut butter whiskey with my coffee. Otherwise, it's uh, Morgan Diet Coke, or Captain Cola, I think they call it in the South. Morgan Diets, we call them here. I don't know. I'm open to suggestions. So for the last day and a half, I've been turning this thing over a sixth of a turn, one hex at a time with that big bar and spring a little croil in there. Trying to get it around the valves as much as I can because obviously that's what's stuck. Uh, I'm sure the rings are stuck a little bit, but this thing turns over super, super nice. So now what I'm going to do is just keep bumping it over and just try to see if the valves are closing on each cylinder. Not much to see, so probably just time lapse through it. Watch me break off some valves or something, and we'll go from there. Like I said, really the only thing that you can do here is you can tap on the one valve in each cylinder. I think it's the exhaust valve, but whatever. There's a, there's a valve in there that you can see through the piston hole. You can see both of them, but you can really only tap on the one, because you don't want to hit them on the side, because then they go, ask me how I know. So the one that we can't get at, on this cylinder is stuck. So I'm pretty sure we're gonna have to pull that head off. I believe, since how it lines up with this intake port, it's the intake side. I think it's exhaust, exhaust, and then these two center two are exhausts. So these two are intakes, and these two are intakes. So looks like the intake is stuck, which is usually pretty common because moisture comes in through the intake. It's hard for moisture to go uphill and get up the exhaust, but I've seen it before. 
I could maybe get something in there and pry sideways, but we know how that goes. I think it's only the exhaust that's stuck on what I would call number seven back here. And we can see the exhaust, so contradictory to what I just said about exhaust is never sticking. We're gonna tap on that one, see if we can hear it snap shut or snap off. Yeah, we're gonna have to pull this head off anyway. And that thing is super, super stuck. Like I said, you can't hit directly on them. You can hit pretty much in the center if you cheat it over, but it's just not gonna go. We'll soak it a little bit. And on this one. Let's see what we got on this side. Everything looks like it's moving over here. I think this one was working fine before number four. I can actually feel air coming out of these two, so maybe they loosen themselves up. The only one I can visually see sticking over here is what I would call the number eight cylinder. And it's the one we can get at on the exhaust, so maybe we'll try tapping on that one. Again, contradicting myself on the exhaust. Really the only ones that are gonna stick, generally speaking, are the ones that are open. They're not gonna stick closed. The camshaft's gonna push it up. But, we'll see what happens. Of course you want to turn it over so that both valves are open so that you know you're not beating it against the camshaft. Got it most of the way down. There it's sticking up again. There was some coil. When I'm turning it over by hand, I can actually feel and hear air in all these other ones, so I think this side, we might be all right not having to pull ahead if we can get this valve loosened up. Hear that snap? That's what you want to hear. There, it snapped back into place all on its own. You can hear it. Now it's going right back down and not even snapping. Take that ratchet off. We need to stop doing that. Not getting a ton of compression here. I don't know if the valves aren't closing quick enough. I mean, they're all the way down, it looks like, but tons of compression on number four. Don't spray the penetrating oil in the cylinder that has compression as it. Shoots the oil right back in your eye. <laughs> I mean, they all got a little bit of compression and I think as we run it more, hopefully it'll clear up a bit. Probably not, but let's go back to that other side, see what we can do. I don't know if we're gonna be able to get it without pulling that head off, but we shall see. I'm gonna give it to this stuff. It smells way better than any penetrating oil that I've ever used. I'm gonna try and refresh my memory of what we had here. Maybe we gained compression on the ones that we didn't have before. Good on number one. Nothing on three. Good on five now. I think this was the one that we had a stuck exhaust. So these two we're going to have to address. This is the one that we can't, I hate to pry up in there, but I really don't want to pull that head off. Even though we could probably have it off in 15 minutes. Oh man, that thing is tight. Tight like a tiger. Yes, you are tight like a tiger.
Well, we got to get at this one. This one's stuck really tight. I don't want to screw that one up because then we'll have a mess. So let's just see if we can pop that head off. Sweet! That head came off even easier than the other one. I don't know why I've been doing it wrong all these years, but this one literally just kind of <laughs> popped right off. There is a little bit of a ridge at the top of the pistons, but look at that. Just like that girl in college. Well, oh, you guys can't read it. Here, let me turn my light off. You can see that right there. STD! Oh yeah. Susie here, she's got the stid. So anyway, that means it's never been bored out, so standard bore, so that's good. All the valves got Ford script on them, so it's probably never even had a valve job. Oh yeah, we even saw this. Where's it at? Where's it at? Right there. It's even got the Ford script on the head gasket. Pretty cool. It's a steel bestest head gasket made in Detroit. Detroit Gasket Men Manufacturing Company, Steel Bestus. That's right, it gives you the cancer in the state of California. So unlike the last 41 or two that we took apart, this 37 block, I think it's a 37, maybe newer, I don't know, whatever, is not factory relieved. So factory relieved means it doesn't have these two ridges coming up here under the valves, that was all cut out on that relieved block. So this is a factory relieved block we can tell that is there's this cutout right here from here to here in between the valves. Like I said, that's the only one I've ever come across. So not really disappointing. Kind of expected to see this, but we got all our gasket surfaces cleaned up. Didn't see any issues. That valve came loose right away. This one took a little bit of work as you guys saw in the time lapse, but pretty much ready to stick it back together, wipe the gasket down. I might wipe this down with some brake cleaner. Probably not. And then we got the head all cleaned up, kind of cleaned up the combustion chambers a little bit. I didn't get too wild. Blew the crust out of here. It really wasn't too bad compared to that last one. So I think we should just be able to put a little head gasket in a can on that gasket, slam her back together, torque it with the buzz gun, throw a new set of plugs in it. Hopefully the points clean up. I don't know. That distributor style and those points and everything, ugh, not good. I do have a distributor machine to put it on the bench to do the stuff on those, but I'm not an expert, so yeah. Hey, at least we haven't had to tear the starter apart yet on this one. All right, back at her. Not a good spot to grab her, Duff? Okay. Head gasket renew in a can. Here we go. Oh, this is the good stuff. Gives you a real good buzz. Sometimes I wake up at night twitching, and I wonder why. And it's probably because of this. Really seals in the asbestos. A little's good, a lot's better. Do not spray into engine compartment. Weird. Would have thought that was a bad idea. the way that goes. 50-50-90 rule. 
50-50 odds. Wrong 90% of the time. Let's make sure our valves didn't stick overnight. That one's closing. So is that one. I think we're good to go, Duffers. Well, suppose we should check for compression now. And then see if we can't get spark and fuel. Should we get the compression tester out? Or just use the thumb? You're right. We're just going to use the thumb. The old thumb's a good go-no-go -no -go gauge. Go. We need to stop doing that. Go! 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 It's not a ton of compression, but... It'll go. I think she just really needs a valve job. And probably some rings. Now I suppose we gotta to try to get some spark. You guys wanna learn about Ford Flathead distributors? That's what I thought. Too bad. I don't know anything about them. Is that what you wanted to hear? Probably not. So this is a three bolt distributor. The other ones that we worked on are a two bolt. A little bit more prominent in the hot rod industry than these three bolts. Because these three bolts suck to work on. But here we are. Can't get an adapter. I think an adapter through Speedway Motors to go from a three bolt to a two bolt is... 10 months out and we would lose the shop way before then so we're gonna have to see if we can get this three bolt to work otherwise I do have an adapter but it's on a car and I really don't want to take it off that car so we'll see if we can get either this three bolt or another three bolt to work it's really the same concept as the small black Chevy distributor but it's got two sets of points in there so twice as finicky and the rotor is just a crazy anomaly Monopoly, Mana, I don't know. Let's get that popped off of there and see what'll happen. Oh, the other thing is they got a coil built right on them. And of course, that's a six volt coil. And it would probably work on 12 volts for a little while, but. So I guess we could set up a separate battery hooked up with six volts hooked up to that coil to fire it up. I don't know. Let's see what we got. adapter kit so Ford flatheads they're an interesting beast this here's a Sun distributor tester it's got an adapter for Ford flathead so you could put any distributor you want in here but you got to have this special adapter to put Ford distributors on there flathead specifically and what this thing does is basically it just bench tests it and it's really the only way to set these early Ford distributors up unless you've got like a KR Wilson little thing. But anyway, you set them up on a bench. You don't set them up on an engine. I really don't know how to run this thing. I'm dangerous enough with it that I can get things set so I can put it on and it runs. But basically you can set your dwell. You can adjust the engine RPM. These things have a vacuum brake. It's not a vacuum advance. So it's kind of the opposite of what you're used to. And you're going to set that up here, but I don't even get into that. It actually works, though. I was just diddling with it because I'm a kid and, you know, can't leave nothing alone. So you can see she's pulling vacuum when I put my finger over it. 
then you can adjust the regulator there. Anyway, squirrel getting off track. But it's got this sweet Rolodex built into it. Oh yeah. And then this thing, I don't know, that must be the manometer. Inches of mercury? I don't know, we don't need that, put that away. We got our setup to Ford. It's for 41 to 48. Uh, it's got the distributor part number. Uh, it's left-hand rotation, so we can turn the rotation either left-hand drive or right-hand drive. Then we can adjust the speed here. Wah! Send her to the moon. Then we can turn our coil power on there. So this thing is six volt. It's got a six volt battery underneath. And this gives you all your different settings here. You know, you set your dwell at 35 to 38 degrees, your points gap 14 to 16 degrees, um, vacuum advanced stuff. So timing adjust, set speed to 180 RPMs, adjust two degrees advance without vac, yada, yada, yada. We don't get into that because our uh, D batteries expired in uh, December of 2018. Pretty sure I bought this thing in like 2013 and I've never put batteries in it. So those are probably 10 year old batteries at least. But, so, and here's the other reason Ford suck. It's because I got the coil built right into the distributor. So I got this sweet adapter from third gen. And that way you can just suck a regular coil up, either a six volt, standard canister style coil or a 12 volt one. Oh yeah, son of a biscuit. So I popped our goofy flathead Ford coil off. Oh, well, it's made in America. And that's a distributor that was on that engine. This one came off a 39 Ford car that I had that ran great until it didn't. It left me stranded on the side of the road. So I kind of wanted to know what the deal with this one was. The points and everything looks really good in here. I think what I determined after trying that coil, changing it to this, is I don't think it was gapped right. I think the, the points gap was too big and it just happened to work until it didn't. But anyway, it was at like 30 thou that these things were gapped at. Now I got them down to about 15 thou, so right in the middle. So, see, I'll show you guys kind of what I got going on here. There's supposed to be some red arrows that light up in there and you set your advance and I don't know how to do that. So I basically just use this to uh, make sure our points are working. It's a really expensive points tester. That's what it is. So left hand drive. Turn on our battery. Light says it's working. And you can see that spark when I get it close enough. So, it's basically what I do with these things. Like I said, they suck. They're way down low on the engine. They're almost impossible to work on in the car. Three bolts, that vacuum line, and then pop your cap off and a wire, and you got it out on the bench here. And they got two sets of points, one there and one there. And you can't even really get in there with a screwdriver. You got to use a bit or this fancy little screwdriver, whatever, so... Pretty terrible design by Ford, and then it's kind of hanging down low. So every time you hit a puddle, psh, distributor cap gets wet, and there you sit. But it's all they really had at the time. And then they got this crazy rotor. So it's got two sets of points coming off the rotor. So there's a tip on the rotor, and then there's another tip on the rotor. And then it spins around and smashes against these things. Sending fire out, teach your wires. Not a super great design, in my opinion, obviously. That's why everybody converts from these three bolts to a two bolt. I'll show you one of those. Actually, they're kind of cool. I think we got one. Oh, here's one right here. So this is a two bolt design, as you can see by those two bolts. They don't have a vacuum line. It's just built right into the casting right there. And then these have an external coil, so you can replace the coil without having to Take it off the distributor. These use the same points, dual points, and then it's got a regular standard style coil. And then, yeah, it doesn't have these two goofy helmet style caps on it. It's just got one regular cap on it. This is what pretty much everybody converts to. But 
freaking adapters are in a 10 month back order. So we're gonna humdinger this baby on there, hook her up 12 volts. She's gonna be hot. Remind me to get some D cell batteries and then maybe we can play around with this thing some more and show you guys what's up. All right, I did hook it up with 12 volts. That sparks way more gooder and hotter when you do it that way. So there you have it. My son, distributor, tester. I don't know what model it is. It's old as fudge. I even got a sun stand. Some other cool sun tools. Yeah, yeah. Battery tester. Old magneto. All the paperwork. Pretty cool. So, stick this baby on there. And then, set of plugs. And we just gotta get some fuel to it. But I got some carbonators later on. You guys know that. Back at her. I guess I didn't show it at all, but these earlier three bolts got a real short snout and the later two bolts got a long snout so i think this thing's got a reground camshaft in it and that's why it's got this spacer in there so this spacer or all the drives in these flatheads are offset so they'll only go on there one way so you can't get this timing 180 degrees off so that's kind of handy and then there's no timing adjustment on these so the timing is all set right there I believe so that's the other thing that you want to set those up on that machine but like I said this was on a running engine it ran pretty good so we should just be able to slam this on there but you guys want to make sure that the distributor is actually getting driven by the camshaft make sure you got this in place if you got an earlier distributor and a later camshaft worthless knowledge for you so let's see, where does that gotta go? As you can tell, these things would be real fun to work on if you had a radiator and fenders and inner fenders. Trucks actually aren't that bad because they're up a little bit. Cars, they're almost easier to work on underneath. I just wanna make sure that the cam is actually driving the distributor before I tighten it up. That would be my luck, I'd have something misaligned. If anybody's got one of those cute little K.R. Wilson bench testers, or somebody else makes them too, I can't remember the name of it. If you want to get rid of it, let me know. I think it'd be kind of neat to have. Obviously, I got one that I don't really use in that big machine, but those little ones would be neat to have. They don't take up much space compared to this thing. I know this carburetor is gonna not be good. The plug wires on this side are absolutely terrible. That side's not much better, but I don't really feel like making a new set of plug wires just to see if we can make this thing run. So, we're gonna give her the old hot sauce, see what happens. So we can't get some flamage, because that's what we're good at, lighting stuff on fire. Kind of feels like it's wants to go, wants to go, wants to go. I don't know how to put the words from my mouth to your ears, but seems like it's hitting on a couple, not all of them. I'm guessing those couple are not these ones over here where the plug wires are basically rotted off. So I'm gonna grab a carb to throw on there that I know is good. And I might do some digging around, see if I can find some plug wires that are 
Just a little bit better than these things. Okay. And we're going to need some more hot sauce. It came back to me just how nasty the oil was on that dipstick. And since this thing's turning over, got compression, should have spark. It's, it's probably going to run. So I think we should drain the oil. And put new stuff in. It's not very often you see that around here, so... Put it on the calendar! You gotta love these Fords with their ginormous drain plugs so that you can tighten the main caps via the drain plug hole. Ugh. So, let's get our pipe wrench out, you know, because we're plumber. Oh look, it's already preset, the Ford flathead. How neat is that? Oh, well, this is just too big, too big. Oh. This whole YouTube one-handed mechanic stuff is getting real old. Now are you loose enough? There we go. What do you think? 50-50 odds, water, no water. I'm saying no water. What's it gonna be? Oh boy. That's that's not good. Um when you gotta fish the oil out with your finger. Ew. What's the red stuff? Why is it separated? What's going on in there? Oh my word. We might have to break this in and run a couple of oil changes. Can we throw some diesel in there? Kerosene? I don't know. Everybody's got so many different ideas. So many experts on my channel. If you don't believe it, just go check out the comment section. I wonder if we shouldn't pull the pan off. I mean we should, but we're not gonna. It's gonna be good enough. Whatever. It's not like we're ruining a virgin 59 AB block. Why is it? Oh. That's why you change your oil every 15,000 miles, kids. But I mean, that stuff looks okay-ish. All right, I'm gonna go wash my hands and uh, just let this thing do its thing. Oh, this is so bad. So this is after draining for over an hour. And look at this. Like, I have to spoon it out of there. Oh, that's a big blob. Oh my gosh. This is more like grease than oil. Look at that pudding, Bill Cosby. I think that's as good as we're gonna get it. We're just gonna get it warmed up and dump the oil is what we gotta do. I'm sure everybody's gonna have their suggestions on diesel additives and kerosene and so on and so forth, but yeah. We did get about two quarts of something out of here. I think the pan just really needs to come off at some point, but we're not gonna do that. So after that, I think I'd almost rather see water in an oil pan. At least that just kind of flushes itself out, even if it is Flint, Michigan stuff. So looking at the dipstick, so the dipstick tube is a little floppy. I don't know. It's like a return tube fitting or something on there. And then I pulled the dipstick out to, you know, see where we were at. See how chewed up that is? Like a rat nod on it. I think that dipstick tube allows this to flop around and I think that got into a, probably a rod slinging around. Chewed her up pretty good. Whoops. Never seen that before. So, 
probably use a new dipstick tube. That's thinking with your dipstick, Jimmy. Think with your dipstick, Jimmy! In these early Fords, they didn't have like a downdraft tube or like a regular filler neck out here, so you just kind of twist this big nasty breather out of there. Fill her up. I got some mystery 10W30 in a Rotella jug that we're going to dump in. I think it's new oil though, so that's always a plus. Oh hey, look at that. It's uh, running out all over the back of the engine. Dirk a dur. Whoopsies! Idiot! Idiot! A big tube and it only runs in that fast. It's probably how sludged up this stupid engine is. <laughs> So I'll give you a quick edumacation on carbonators. This is what we call Holly 94. Some of them are labeled 59, some of them are labeled Chandler Grove, some are labeled 8RT or 8BA, but basically that's your Model 94 Holly. And this is a Model 97 Stromberg. The 97 is the dead giveaway. This is a large logo, they make them where you guessed it, the 97 is significantly smaller. Some of them don't have any logo at all. The easy way to tell which one you've got is the fuel inlet is on the main body, so it's below this top cover, and then on a 94, it's on the top side. So really that's the main difference. The 97 is kind of the hot rod carburetor, and the 94 is just kind of your standard run of the mill carburetor, so this is a little bit more sought after but guy's been using these forever. They work great. One of the other big differences is this is your accelerator pump linkage on these, and this is your accelerator pump linkage on the 97. It's all kind of external and goes up into the main body or the top cover up here, whereas this is all just kind of compact and in the main body. It's not all external like it is on the 97. The 97's got a lot of beefier bases to them. Don't ask me why, I don't know. Know nothing about them. I usually just stick with the 94s because I got a fat stack of them from a college roommate because he rebuilt a bunch of them for me because he's a nice guy. So here's our large logo. Here's the small logo. Just a little guy, big guy. And this is a no logo. You can see it's still got the side inlet. I think they made a 81 Stromberg too and a 48. I don't know much about those, but you can tell. All pretty much the same thing with that external throttle linkage. And they all say Stromberg on them. So yeah. Your worthless carbonator knowledge of the day. Like this one is a model 21-29. That's a Ford. And then you can see just how much beefier the 97 bases are versus the 94s. Now we wait for the fuel leak. Preferably a controlled leak. Well, hook up the coil, Let's see what happens. Slingshot engaged. Slingshot engaged. Sounds like she wants to go. First time running in like at least 35 years, probably 40. Got a little bit of a fuel leak. That's what I like about these flatties. They always put a smile on your face. I 
I want it for not getting any fuel. Don't be a wank. Fill your tank. She's Smoky Duff. Hey, there we go. Daddy sound good! Oh, our coil wire came off. That's an easy fix. We just got a 1937 Ford Flathead running that hasn't been on the road in, I don't know, 40 years. I guess I looked up Gambles, and they went out of business in 1985-ish, it looks like. So it's at least been 36 years since this thing's been on the road. I'm guessing that battery wasn't the last one that they ever sold. So we're just going to say 40 years. This thing's been sitting a long time. A couple of stuck valves. The engine was kind of stuck. Not really. I mean, this thing still... As you've seen, it needs a full flush on the oil system, needs water pumps, you will do plug wires, should just take head gasket in it. Probably needs a valve job, but hey, it runs. I'll take some ATF, dump it down the carb, fog it down, and stash it away with all the other ones I got. So. Flathead's something I've always really liked to get running. I got a lot of parts around for them because they're just so freaking cool. I mean, they're like the birth of the American hot rod industry was these Flathead V8s. So, I think what we're going to do now is, like I said, stash this thing away, take the cab, put it on a half ton chassis with a box, put the sheet metal all in one piece. We're probably not going to get it running and driving, but Probably just piece it all together for the next guy so he's got a good start on a project or she so i've got either a 35 or 36 frame here the reason i say that it's got the 35 six wishbones wide five bolt patterns you think 36 right well, it's got the five on five and a half in the front so either the front end was swapped out or the rear end was swapped out we'll check the vin i'm pretty sure it's a 35 frame they wore out that rear end Swapped a 36 rear end. I mean, they wore it a 36 front end. Swapped in a 35. What do you think, Duff? He's busy looking for rabbits. It's a pretty chewy frame. Rotted out here in the kick. 
Your cross member's busted. This cross member's missing. Frame rail's tweaked, but we're just gonna kind of straighten it, patch that together, maybe stick a chunk of steel in there just to kind of firm it up. Because we're just gonna make a roller, next person can build it, or if nobody ever buys it, or I decide I really need to do a 37, then I'll either grab another frame, start from scratch, and then swap this body onto it when I'm ready, or we'll fix this one. I don't know that this one's really, I mean, everything's fixable, but this one's tough. This thing was made into a trailer one time, so they kind of welded this strap in there so that the torque tube didn't bounce up and down, so maybe we'll pound that down. Weld that so that torque tube's tied down. Other than that, we're not really gonna do much. So, need to get that VIN number, figure out what it is, start doing some fixing. Because chains don't make good cross members. Even Duff knows that. So let's get started building the 37 Ford pickup. Here we go. So there you have it. We just turned a 37 Ford truck into a half ton pickup. Duff likes pickups way better than trucks. Duff approves. If you haven't already, check out our new Duff decals. We got White Lightning 62 Chevy C10 on there. Got them in two inch and four inch sizes. Been doing a grab pack of four for uh, 10 bucks shipped, so. Hit me up with an email in the description down below. We can do PayPal or we can snail mail a check if you don't have the PayPal stuff. I don't have the Venomous or whatever that stuff is, so. But yeah, I mean, we don't have inner fenders in it. We don't have fenders and running boards, but I'm kind of an open wheel guy. Needs a tailgate. This box I picked up at a swap meet in Iola. And it's, it's pretty rough, but That'll be easy enough to patch in. You just gotta fix that bead part there. The floor is toast, but I could cut that out, do wood or 
some type of other insert. It's pretty straight. And the other side's way better. Need a tailgate. See, this side ain't bad, and it's even got that little splash apron down there, so you got a pattern to make one for both sides. Trucks have the fuel tank come out that side underneath the cab. Pickups are back here. It's even got the taillight bracket. I did check the VIN on this frame. It's a 35. No, wait. Yeah, it's 35, so the small bolt pattern's right. Sure enough, it was the rear end that was swapped out. And it's just kind of mocked up. Got the bed bolted down. Cabs bolted down. Oh, radiators bolted down. So this thing's a pretty good start to a project for being on a budget. I mean, this is like what I would call, a, you know, entry level deal. I mean, you can spend 3,000 bucks on a cab. So this way you got a whole frame, needs some work. You got axles, of course needs work and they're mismatched, but better than what you want to do. This is kind of what gets you started. And like I said, those trucks, they just, they don't really do it for me. And not a lot of resale and there's not a lot of parts available for them and these things are a whole lot more fun to drive more fun to look at and you can get a lot of stuff for them so there you have it appreciate it thank you very much for watching go check our other videos if you watch it for this long click like subscribe go check out some of the other channels we mentioned you know uh ryan at iowa classic car puddin's fab shop sobering restoration uh, old car guy Grant Tomy is a six fan. You guys know the drill. All those guys, they're awesome. Coastal Auto Reaction. Check out their channels. Appreciate it. Remember, doesn't matter how you get it done, as long as you're having fun. This one was kind of fun, actually. I like the early Ford stuff. Maybe we should do some more early Ford stuff. We're going to have to get some early Fords over there. Oh, man. Too much stuff. Too much stuff. Thank <laughs> you.